When I was a student, the lymphatic system was a bit like the stock market. I'd heard of it, and I was fairly sure it did something important, but I had no idea what or how. Nowadays, I still have no idea how the financial systems of the world work, but I have just about got my head around the lymphatics. In this video, I'm going to run through some of those questions I used to have, looking in simple terms at what the lymphatic system does, how it comes together, and why it means that a problem here can prevent with a symptom here. Broadly speaking, the lymphatic system has three jobs. To collect lymphatic fluid, to check and monitor that lymph, and then return it to the venous system. Lymph starts off life with interstitial fluid, the fluid found in the space between blood vessels and cells. Here it's collected by lymph capillaries that leave and come together to form lymphatic vessels. As the lymph is carried away, these structures converge to form increasingly large vessels, before forming lymphatic trunks, and then finally lymphatic ducts. We'll also have organs that produce white blood cells, such as the thymus or spleen, contributing to the lymphatic fluid. Along this network of trunks and vessels, we'll find groups of lymph nodes that are a bit like stations on a train track. These are the filters of the lymphatic system, responsible for checking the lymph for infections, cancerous cells, or anything else untoward. The fluid in this system only moves in one direction, towards the point where it can re-enter the veins, and that means there are two last details to point out. First, these vessels have valves to stop the backflow of lymph. Secondly, we can describe the vessels in terms of their relationship to the lymph nodes. The afferent vessels arrive at the nodes, and the efferent vessel will exit. So, that's a conceptual overview, but how did it all come together in the body? Well, to demonstrate that, I'm going to draw out the lymphatic system on this illustration here. Now, for this, I won't be looking at the smaller vessels, or indeed most of the lymph nodes. Instead, I'm going to start with the trunks that drain the major regions of the body. So, for example, down here we'll have the left and right lumbar trunks that collect all of the lymph from the lower limbs. We'll also have the intestinal trunk that drains the abdominal organs. All three of these trunks empty into a dilated sac known as the cisterna chile. Now, if you've ever spent time on the loo, you'll have already met a cistern. It's just another name for a structure that stores liquid. But what about this word chile? Well, the lymphatics of the abdomen aren't just collecting interstitial fluid. We also have special structures in the small intestine, known as lacteals, that absorb fat. This mix of fat and lymph creates a milky white fluid known as chyle. So the cisterna chile is simply the structure that drains and stores chyle. Heading up from the cisterna chile is the thoracic duct, the largest vessel in the lymphatic system. This follows the aorta through the diaphragm and then runs along the posterior wall of the chest. Around here it receives lymph from the left side of the chest via the left bronchomediastinal trunk and from the upper limb via the left subclavian trunk. It also receives the left jugular trunk from the left side of the head and then finishes by emptying into the veins of the neck. Now in this region we have several large veins coming together. On either side we've got the subclavian veins collecting blood from the upper limbs. If these head medially they'll meet the external jugular veins and then the larger internal jugular veins from the brain and face. The subclavian is from the arm, the internal jugular is from the head, and so they unite to form the brachiocephalic veins. The two brachiocephalics come together and form the superior vena cava. Remember, this is emptying into the right atrium of the heart, so it lies to the right of the midline, making the left brachiocephalic just a bit longer. The bit we're really interested in is this bend here, where the subclavian and internal jugular veins will meet. This is the venous angle, and it's at this point that the thoracic duct empties into the venous system. So, now we've got all of the lymph in the lower body, plus the left side of the upper body, draining into the left venous angle. But where does the lymph in this region go? Well, rather than heading all the way across the body to join the thoracic duct, 
the bronchomediastinal, subclavian and jugular trunk from the right, form their own duct called the right lymphatic duct, and this will drain into the right venous angle. The final thing to talk about is how lymph nodes can indicate infection. Earlier we saw how throughout this network of vessels, there are groups of lymph nodes that monitor and filter the lymphatic fluid. When these detect an infection or cancerous cells, the nodes can become enlarged. This makes them easier to visualise, and even palpable if they're close to the skin. As the lymph continues its journey, subsequent groups of lymph nodes can also become enlarged, and this is why abdominal issues can prevent with symptoms in the neck. Let's imagine a patient with a stomach cancer. Initially, this will spread to the abdominal lymph nodes, but since these nodes are found deep within the body cavity, it's unlikely that the patient would notice if they become enlarged. However, if those cancerous cells follow the lymphatic drainage, they can eventually spread to the nodes around the venous angle, known as the supraclavicular or Virchow nodes. If these nodes become enlarged, then the patient might notice the pronounced swelling on one side of their neck. Now that said, while swelling in these nodes could be a sign of an abdominal problem, we also have lymph from three of the limbs and the left upper body passing through here. Potentially a problem in any of these areas could result in enlarged Virchow nodes. So that's a brief overview of the lymphatic system and how it all comes together. If you'd like to learn more about the nodes and vessels of each region, then check out the lymphatic card game in the description below. If you have any questions or can explain how the FTSE 100 works, then please just get in touch. But otherwise, thank you for watching, take care, and I'll hopefully see you again soon.